Starting your debt-free journey can be scary, it can be overwhelming, you finally have hit rock bottom and just wanna pay off all of your debts and it's just overwhelming. And I am going to share with you my four top things that you need to do when you're starting your debt-free journey just to kind of reassure yourself that you can do this, things that you wanna make sure that you can make happen and just what to tackle first, how to do it. So I'm gonna break it all down for you, stay tuned. Hey. Hey friends, welcome to Freedom and a Budget. I'm Kelly. If you're new here, welcome. My channel is all about living life well on a budget. Budget don't have to be constricting, let you not do anything. No, they give you freedom. And I am going to share some of my top tips on what to do when you are starting your debt-free journey. I personally paid off $23,000 worth of student loan debt. It sucked, but I got through it and I did it. And then I cashed out my wedding and car and lots of fun stuff. So now we are debt free except for our mortgage, my husband, Jamie and I, and two cats. So we are going to break down today some of my top tips on what to do when you're starting a debt free journey. And I know that it can be overwhelming. I was there. I remember hitting rock bottom. I remember just being so scared. And I personally was paying off my student loans and I thought I was doing well and chugging away and I had like $5,000 of debt left and just one more loan. Then all of a sudden I got a phone call and I had about $20,000 more worth of student loans that I thought I had paid off because I wasn't tracking my stuff. I was just paying and things ended up going to default and all this stuff and I was just being terrible with money and I thought I paid that off and yeah I hadn't and it had been in default for years and years and years yeah I was an idiot with money I was not always good with money y'all so I had hit rock bottom and it was scary and I remember Jamie and I we were dating we wanted to get married and we'd gone down to the beach because we live really close to the beach and just kind of go down there and I ended up just sobbing and breaking down and it was scary and we had talked about getting married and well I was like well I guess we can't get married anymore well I guess we have to put everything on loans and take out a loan for the ring and take out a loan for their wedding and it's never gonna happen and he was like holy cow what just happened what is going on it was bad so I've been there guys, I've been there. I know what it's like. I know how scary it is and just overwhelming and you just have all this like ideas in your head of I wanna do this and I wanna do that and I need to start making extra payments on this and okay, if I put $10 to all of my credit cards and I can I can pay them off, right? And it's just, just take a deep breath, it's okay. So I'm gonna break down some of the steps, how to just tackle them the best way, how to make progress, how to stay motivated throughout the whole process. It's gonna be awesome. You guys got this. I believe in you. You can make it happen. Whether you're starting your debt-free journey, halfway through your debt-free journey, or at the tail end, I'm hoping that this video is motivating for you. And I really hope that it just gives you some peace because that is what I'm here for. I'm cheering you on, I'm your cheerleader, I'm your biggest fan, and you got this. The first thing is to list all of your debts. Now, this can be scary, this is not fun. If you don't know all of your debts, which you may not, or you could be like me and think you know all of your debts, and then, hmm, you don't. So I recommend going to a free credit report site. I recommend Credit Sesame, they're awesome. I love them, I'll have a link for you guys down below in the description box. Credit says me, it'll break it all down for you. You can see exactly who you owe money to, what's in default, what's not in default, all of that, and really just get a tackle of what you owe and who you owe money to. And start making a list. Write down all of the people they owe money to. Write down the minimum payments. Write down the total balance. Write down the due date of when each bill is due. And then also write down the interest rate. Now, some people like to go the debt snowball. Some people go, like to go the debt avalanche method. You're only gonna need to know the interest if you're doing that debt avalanche method I'll have a link down below of the debt snowball versus debt avalanche which one is gonna be best for you and you can decide for yourself but make a list of all of your debts make a list of all of those different categories for each one and just take it in and it's okay and you may cry and it may be overwhelming it may cause a fight with your spouse it could be it could be ugly and it could be scary but guys it's necessary you know may have scooted around this for long enough and put it off and put it off and guys it's 
it's time to tackle it head on and you're not going to get to that point where you need to be unless you do tackle it head on and it sucks i know i've been there but is necessary so that is step number one write down all your debts go to a place like credit sesame find everything there and track them all number two is to create a budget and no guys writing down all of your bills is not a budget nope it's not a zero based budget so for a zero based budget that is a budgeting method that i recommend whether you do it on paper whether you do it in a budgeting app whether you do it in excel like i do i personally do everything in excel i have my budget templates for you guys i'll have them linked down below in the description box and the same templates that i use throughout my whole entire journey and i still use them to this day but having your income and then minus your expenses all of your debts all your regular costs all of everything and then that should equal zero. So every single dollar has to have a name and writing them all out, seeing them all on paper and tracking your expenses. Oh my gosh, guys, just writing down your bills, just writing down your income, just writing down your expenses is not enough. You need to track everything. Yeah, it sucks in the beginning. Yeah, it seems overwhelming, but if you're in your budget every other day, every couple of days, it's not gonna be overwhelming. It's not gonna be too much to handle or anything like that. It's really just going to be natural for you to, you know, you spend something, you go through your statements, then you just add it to your budget. And to come up with the categories, I will do a spending analysis. So that is what I typically do and what I have my coaching clients do is a spending analysis. So what we're gonna do is pull three to six months worth of bank statements, go through them, get a highlighter, print them out. I create a spending analysis spreadsheet. That's just me, I am a spreadsheet nerd. And so I create a spending analysis spreadsheet so just go through everything, create categories, and then you can kind of add up how much everything is, and you can really track to see, okay, this is what I'm spending in groceries for the past six months, let's average it. That's gonna be our budget for groceries. This is what we're spending in eating out. Holy cow, that's a lot. Let's cut it back a little bit. This is what we're spending in personal money. This is what we're spending on the kids. This is what we're spending on school stuff. This is what we're spending for all the different categories. You can really break them down, and it'll really make it a lot more manageable so that you can just make your budget and really figure out what to put for each category. That's one of the hardest things is figuring out how much for each category that you're spending and what to put for each one. If you're finding value in this, I would love for you to hit the like button. It really helps me to know what videos you guys like, what videos you don't like. Hit the just like button too, that's totally okay. I really study that like and dislike button and really to see what videos you guys like and that's the type of videos that I like to put out more of those types of topics because I wanna put out videos for you guys. So I would love for you to hit the like button. It really helps me just to know. Also helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe and join the Freedom in a Budget family. I put out tons of videos like this. So I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. Number three is to find extra money to put towards your debt. Find money that you can go and just tackle more. Maybe sell some things. Find, go through your home, find stuff that you can declutter. It is 2020. It is a great time to just purge your house, purge of all the Christmas chaos and everything, and really go through and declutter, do some sell stuff, and really just, just clean it out. Any extra money can go towards debt. Or have you guys seen my savings challenge? So this is for the 52 week savings challenge and I wanna do more trackers for you guys. So if you want more trackers, specific trackers, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to do those for you guys. But this is the 52 week savings challenge. I'll have this in a blog post where you can get the free download. This is a free printable. And for this one, each jar is a week and then you color in whichever amount you want to save or you put towards debt. So a lot of the, this is based off the 52 week challenge. So the 52 week challenge is you save $1 the first week, $2 the second week, all the way up to $52. And if you do that, then you save a total of $1,378. Now that's awesome, but the thing that's hard with that is the you're saving $52 at the end of the year, which is Christmas time. It can be really hard and different things. So what's cool with this one is you pick whichever one you want to save. So if you want to save $15 this week, it's a little tight, so you want to save $15. Or maybe you just got a bonus or your tax refund and you want to save a large amount. You can save $46 or 52, it's somewhere on here. But $51 and and those higher weeks, you can tackle the harder ones. And then the easy weeks, you can take $2 or whatever it may be. So this is a great tracker. And then whenever you put color in a square, you'll transfer that money towards your savings or you'll make a snow 
like payment on your debt. So this is on my blog and I will have it linked down below for you guys. Also, if you're having trouble cutting your expenses, cutting your, your spending, maybe try cash envelopes. Cash envelopes are not for everyone, but I really recommend them in the beginning of people's debt free journey. I don't use them anymore. I use them for years. You guys watch my cash envelope videos and they are really, really helpful in training your brain and training your brain on how you spend and the, the difference in swiping a card versus paying with cash, cold hard cash, it really it, it changes. It changes how you view your money. It changes how you how you spend. So I really recommend people in the beginning to spend with cash and to use cash envelopes. That is huge. That can really make a big difference. Number four is to wait until the end of the month to put any of this extra money towards your debt. So we've been saving money. We've been selling stuff. We're doing the savings challenge, and we want to make these you know these extra date payments and we want to, you know, just go at it and do it, I recommend waiting till the end of the month, at least in the beginning, first couple of months. I have, you know, some clients that I'm working with right now because it's a new year and they are just gun ho They're excited. They want to pay off all this stuff. But the past couple of months, they've also been in the red and they've also been overspending. So yes, I'm so excited that they are pumped and they are in it to win it and they are all about putting extra money towards their debt. But the past couple months, they've been living off of credit cards and not able to, to make their bills. So I really recommend waiting to the end of the month. See how much money you have left over. It's a zero-based budget. So if you have $15 left at the end of the month, that is going to go towards your student loans, your credit cards, whatever it is, whether you're doing the debt snowball or the debt avalanche, or you're saving up your emergency fund. So whatever goal you're working on, that's going to go towards it. But if you're in the red, we got to get you out of the red first. That is first and foremost to get current on all your bills, get out of the red so that you are breaking even in the month. And then we want to cut spending and increase your income, get a side hustle, whatever it may be so that you can put that extra. So I really, really, really recommend waiting till the end of the month so that you can see where you're at. You may have $200 that you can work with. That is awesome. That is incredible. Put that towards your debt, put that towards your savings, put that towards whatever goal you're working on but just wait till the end of the month wait until you get you know kind of the gist of it see how your money goes especially if you're not used to budgeting and if you never had a budget like I said I have my excel budget for you guys down below in the description box if you want to do that and also remember that it typically takes three to six months to get used to budgeting to be on a budget just to get comfortable with it and to not you know be I don't know so many times that, you know, they make a budget the first month they're over budget, the second month they're over budget and they just get discouraged and they quit. Don't quit. And it's going to take some time. It's going to take a little bit to get used to learn how you how you work and how you can do best with budgeting and just how, you know, I'm rambling, but just, to, just know it takes a couple months to get in the flow of it. So I really hope that this was helpful. I have a playlist for you guys on how to just tackle all this, to answer some of the other questions that you may have on how to stop living paycheck to paycheck, how to get ahead of your bills, how to cut grocery costs, how to do a spending analysis. I'll have all those videos for you in the playlist. You can just sit down, grab a cup of coffee, glass of wine maybe, and just watch the videos, watch them all the way through, make your budget. I'll have all the Reese's for you. Reese's, I love Reese's. I'll have all the resources for you guys down below in the description box. So I'll see you in that playlist. Hey, no, no, no.